Continuing with our engineering analysis of the Champlain Towers South Collapse in the Miami-Dade County of Surfside, Florida, today we're studying an extra column that seems to have many of us engineers baffled. What you are looking at here is aerial footage that we've obtained on October 26th. This is the now empty Champlain Tower South condominium collapse site. So this should give you a pretty good idea of approximately the current state of the property. And you can see they've removed much of the heavy equipment that was pumping out all of the water. So they have since then pretty much lost control of the site again and water has flooded it once more. And we want to find out what is the deal with this extra column that we're talking about that we found. So in early July, you can see they were still clearing most of the debris out. In fact, this debris on the left side is from the part of the building that they demolished on July 4th. This was the part of the condo that was still standing. This red borderline is the part of the condo that collapsed, but they noticed that a lot of water was coming in. And so here's your ramp coming in off of 88th Street, and at bottom of the ramp is right here. And then this, of course, is where the columns were that initially collapsed. And, and this is the one that we think the tourist took the video of where we think there was the missing column. But right here is when, for the first time, we spotted this H-beam back in July. And you can see it aligns up with the bottom border of the building so we were trying to figure out here what this extra column is you can see it right there okay so this is how the H beam is supposed to work so it's gonna sit on these four columns here down on the garage and then they want to add this fifth one here to go from the first floor all the way up to the penthouse but let's take a look at it without the H beam there so I made them green because they're happy the four columns there right they're by themselves that's the normal columns in the garage but now you bring this H beam in and you stick it there. And the reason why it's there is to transfer, this is a transfer beam. It's going to transfer all of this weight from the column here, this column from the first floor to the penthouse. So it will transfer all of this weight to each of these other columns here. In my opinion, this was not the wisest idea to do something like this, especially without widening these 16 inch columns. This could pose a problem for you. So in my opinion, by adding more stress onto these columns, they're not green anymore. These guys are maybe turning yellow. They're somewhat unhappy that they're being forced to take on the extra load. So here's what got us to this point in the first place. Back in July 2nd, the judge who's in charge of everything that's going on here, Michael Hansman, he appoints this guy, Michael Goldberg, to be the receiver of the condominium now. So he's in charge of everything, all of the business going on. So he files this permit in the court asking for authorization for Bofam Construction Company to undertake the dewatering work on the site now that NIST has pulled everything off and there's water flooding the basin of this now hockey rink-like structure. So he submits this drawing here from the construction company and we're going to take a look at it in picture format. So their drawing wasn't really all that clear, but what their their plan was to create 12 extraction points here on the floor of the garage. And through all of these extraction points here, they were going to pump the water up and out. So there was a pump here on the south side and a pump on the north side. And then on this, on the north side here, they also had this gigantic pump and a filtration system and a weir tank. So that weir tank is what I showed you on September 5th. Fifth, if you remember that giant blue tank with the huge hose coming out of it that was pumping water right into the F dot storm sewers inlet here. And so the water has to be somewhat clean and filtered out. So that's the purpose of the weir tank. So then NIST gives us this video that they shot as they were emptying out all of the debris. And here's our first view of the beam here. Pretty decent close-up shot from above. So you can see the shape of it there and how it runs along the whole southern border here of the property. And then here's the view from this side. Okay, so I had to take a screenshot here because this is all that NIST gave us. But this angle here is a really good shot that shows exactly what we're looking at. So if you look here, this is the ramp coming down at and you can see right through all the mess here, right where that vacuum cleaner is there, that shop vac. That is the bottom of the ramp. In fact, that's the line drain you can see. Right here between all of the debris here, you can see that's the line drain at the bottom of the ramp. So normally the cars came in off the street down the ramp and they would either turn left to come east. And this was the main east-west driveway inside of the garage. The cars coming off of the ramp would either turn left to come east 
east here, or they would turn right and go west towards the elevator shaft. Right in this area above us on the first floor is where the gym would be, over here at the fitness center. This right here was the main east-west corridor inside the garage. And so this beam would sit on top of these four columns right here. And let me show you, this is the first column. This is the second column. And then over here, the one with the red on the bottom, this is the third column. And I want you to remember that this has the red on it because it's the only column that we could find in the garage with red on it. And I don't know why, but there's the third column. And then way off over here on the other corner, you can barely see it is the fourth column is over here, which we'll see in better views later. But look what we noticed here. We found a column here. This is a mystery column. This is the column that has all of us engineers baffled because you can see it's definitely, or at least appears to be growing out of the floor of the garage right here. And it appears to be a source of some water as well. Now, I don't know if this is leftover water from rain, but we can figure that out later. So you have this mystery column coming here out of the garage floor. This is the border of the building itself. This is the southernmost wall of the Champlain Towers condo building before it collapsed. And then this is the east wall of it right here. And there's still about another 20 feet to the actual seawall, as we call it, or the, the wall of the garage. In the middle of this east-west driveway, there should not be a column here. And in fact, we did not see this column anywhere. Let's go take a look in the garage. I'll show you where this is. And man, did we get a lot of questions from people over the months since we uploaded our other videos in July asking about this other column here and asking about the H-beam. Why was it left behind? Why didn't this take it with them? Was the beam too heavy to be moved on the trucks? Did NIST want to leave it behind so they could come back later and revisit it and reanalyze it in place? We don't know. Okay, so now as you remember from our friend Fiorella's now famous video here, she finds her spot over there and she's going to give us a better view in a second. First, she's turning around and looking to the left in a second here and then she'll give us a better view of it when she turns the camera back around right there. Okay, so pretty much right here, where you, you can see it head on. So it starts at number 15. You can see it going straight back to there. Turns on 17, right? Comes back to here and then comes back towards us and ends over here. You can see how tall this thing is. It's just a beast of a beam. Where do you see anything growing out of the basement here? Don't tell me I'm in the wrong spot. We know we're in the right spot here. There's that red stripe on the bottom of the, the column for 17 there. So we know we were in the right place. This thing didn't move when it fell. It fell pretty much just kind of straight down a little bit to the side, but it, it, it did fall straight down. So where is this column? We don't see it here. And sure enough, it is not in the plans either. Now this is the basement level framing plan from the architect's drawing. So this is page 30 of 336. And then what I did, you'll see here on the next slide, I added where that H-beam sort of goes right in this area here. And then this big gray square is the outline of the border of the building part that collapsed. So this is the part of the condominium that collapsed. And then the H-beam goes here, and you can see that it's on the southern edge of the building. So there is nothing here on the plan that shows any type of column. So even when we zoom in, and there shouldn't be one because this is the basement plan. Remember here, this was the east to west driveway where there should be no columns. So why then do we have that mystery column sitting there, folks? In the photograph, it appears right here. But yet, in Fiorello's video, we see nothing here on the floor. So that just doesn't make sense, does it? And we know we've got everything here in the right spot. Now you might recall this overlay image that I made for you on top of the drone image. I put this on that video that I uploaded for you back on September 5th. So this shows the H-beam there sitting on the floor of the garage and it's in the correct place. And yet there you can see on the far side of it, you can see the rebar sticking up from that column. Now that we have seen the garage level framing plan, let's now move up one floor to the lobby framing plan, where here is where you will see the architect's plans for this H-beam. And as I zoom into it, you can see it goes exactly where I showed that it. it goes, right along the bottom edge of the border of the building. See, this whole line of columns is your southern edge of the building. And all of these other beams that you see coming out here, coming out here and over here, these are all of those beams under the planter. And here's where that column M11 point one is that we think fell first in the tourist video so really all we have here you can see the one two three 
four columns that we showed plus we have this other one in the middle so this is a new column now appearing in the middle but this is only on the first floor plan this is the lobby level plan and so this column does not go down to the basement level so yet why did we see that there in the other picture but yet we know it's not there in Fiorella's video so it, we're just seeing a lot of conflicting uh, scenes going on here related to this column and now we need to determine what this column is here for as we will show you this column goes all the way up to the penthouse going up from the first floor here is more floors here's a typical floor plan so from here we can see there's the one column two column three column but for some reason they've done away with that fourth one now so it looks like they only had those columns on the basement level but they've done away with the column that was supposed to be right here in this corner on all the other floors because it doesn't really matter you don't need it beyond the garage level because it's just there to hold this transfer beam remember the beam is not on any other level other than the first floor i've just got it shown here as a reference to show you where it was down below on the basement level and to show why it was there to support the weight of this column coming all the way down to the first floor so right now we're on all of the upper floors going from the second floor up to the 12th floor. Now let's see what it looks like on the penthouse. So here we are on the 12th floor penthouse. And as you can see, what we've got is, here's the overlay of the H beam of where it would be right beneath it, but down on the bottom of the lobby level floor, just over the basement. So again, here's that column in the middle. And so as we can see, this column in the middle serves as being a corner piece here, sort of a cornerstone for the kitchens and all of the A units. These are the A, the unit A floor plans. These are all the units the, the, that are the corner unit uh, that are like, for example, 1212, 1112, all the way down to unit number 112. So their kitchens are different than the other ones. Now, why do they need to have this little column up here in the middle? Because none of these other units going across here need to have a column there. Okay, so now returning back to the garage level. Now, this is the garage level floor plan. Before, we were looking at the framing plan, but here's the actual floor plan. And look, you can see the arrows here where the cars are meant to be able to go straight east and west. They're supposed to be able to drive right across here unimpeded and then turn here unimpeded and then turn back around this way unimpeded. That's why that one column, you don't see it here on the garage level, but it would be right here in the middle of this part of the H beam on the first level going all the way up to the penthouse. See, So here is the engineering company Morabito Consultants. They were brought in in 2018 to start the 40-year certification process and these samples were done last July of 2020. If you look and you look close up here, he did a great job here of showing where that H beam is. And here it is on the southern border of the building. There's all the other beams going to the planters. Zoom out a little more here. The easternmost edge of the building is here. So there's a whole bunch of other little beams and stuff that are there basically to support all of the planters that are outside of the building. I'm still at a loss here as to why they didn't just isolate the pool deck right along the southern line of the building here with an isolation seam. Like I showed you on my video a couple of weeks ago that we put up on four things that could have prevented this building from collapsing. And I even showed you how the Marriott Resort in Fort Lauderdale there on Harbor Beach, how they had the, the seams in the back there. So here it, it gives you an easier view of what it looks like because remember this is the first floor lobby level. So here's where that column starts. The column does not go below to the garage floor. Okay, now on or about September 12th, the county finally allowed Alan Kilsheimer and a group of other people to come in and tour the property. That's why they had these cones here. They did get one reasonably good shot from this angle. However, I still don't think it's a close enough shot. I wanted something real close up. I mean, we can zoom in and zoom into it and um, they didn't use the best camera and they didn't use the best resolution megapixels either. It's hard to figure out what this column is. It's not likely that it was a column that was in in here. Maybe somebody came in and added this, tried to do some shoring up. We simply don't know. But there's your whole H beam sitting right where it was. There's your red stripe there, you see. This was the east-west driveway right here and there shouldn't have been a column sitting here. I don't It's just mind-boggling. So maybe you could let us know in the comments down below if you have an idea of where or what this column is. Okay, so let's take a look at the other couple of pictures they took when they were down there. Taken by Alan Kilsheimer's group and that's Alan right there. And he's standing in front of the beam. There's the, the column with the red stripe for space number 17. And our friend Fiorella, who took the garage video, her car would have been parked right here had she bought that unit. 
space number 17 is right here. So the post for the beginning of the space where you pull in is right here. And these two were those weird cases where there was a column like halfway up of space. So her parking space actually comes up to somewhere probably around this red line here. So here's the south side of it. So here we are right on the southern border of where the building was. There's the, the one column. And right here on the lower right hand corner, you can see the rebar sticking out for the other column. So they went around and they got shots around this thing, but not in the real important spot on the other side. We wanted to see the close up of it. So this column right here, let's go take a look and see which one this is. Column is right here. It is column N9.1 or N10, depending on how you want to refer to it based on the drawings. And here's just more views that they took of it. So you can see it was a pretty massive structural beam, this transfer beam. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed with the alerts turned on, you're missing out because here, here's our tool giveaway, as you can see. So make sure you don't miss that, folks. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, hey, do us a favor, give us a thumbs up down below. That tells us that you like us. And then remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on your alerts so you'll be notified every time we produce a great video like this. And we'll see you folks all on the next one.